So the most common mechanism or reason why a child gets hurt usually is from a fall onto an outstretched hand. And these are things like falls from playground equipment, like monkey bars, or very commonly trampolines. Uh, we also see kids who are injured because of collision type injuries, so things like bicycle crashes. And then we also rarely see high energy types injuries. These are things like motor vehicle crashes and ATV or all-terrain vehicle accidents. Because the most common reason for kids and adolescents to get injured is a fall onto an outstretched hand, uh, the most common types of fractures and dislocations that we usually see are injuries about the elbow, the forearm, or the wrist. However, very commonly children can also injure their lower extremity, and these could be fractures about things like the thigh bone or the femur, or the shin bone or the tibia, uh, and very commonly we also see injuries like sprains of joints, such as the knee or the ankle, or strains of the muscles and tendons about the lower extremity. Commonly, when children are injured, a lot of families are very anxious and want to be seen definitively within a day or two after the injury. I tell the families that I treat that it's okay to wait for a couple of days after a child's injury to know that you're receiving pediatric-specific orthopedic care for those nuances and subtleties that may be common in many children with fractures or other injuries. So many families ask me, what's the difference between a fracture or an injury in a child or adolescent than that of an adult? And I tell them it's the plasticity of the pediatric skeleton or the immature bone that can make the location or type of the fracture very different. In addition, children and adolescents also have open growth plates, which can also make their types of injuries such as fractures or dislocations different from adults. So the growth plate or the physis is a cluster of cells that's inside the bone uh, in the child's skeleton and that helps the child's bone either grow longitudinally over time or in some places can close as the child is done growing. Because the growth plate is weaker than the rest of the bone, this can make it susceptible to fractures, especially in the growing child and adolescent. Because of that plasticity or immature bone in children and adolescents, fortunately, very frequently, many of these fractures and dislocations can be treated non-operatively. And that can be with a variety of immobilization type methods. These are things like casts or splints, or frequently sometimes even removable Velcro splints or removable Velcro walking boots. Some children's fractures, if they're displaced, meaning the bones are separated from each other, or they're angulated, meaning that the relationship is not the same, might need to be treated with a manipulation or a reduction, otherwise known as setting the bone. And very, very rarely do children's fractures require true formal surgical or operative intervention. So at MUSC Children's Health, we're very fortunate that all of our pediatric orthopedic specialists have received at least one extra year in subspecialty training only in pediatric orthopedics, including children's injuries like fractures, dislocations, sprains, and strains. So although an injury like a fracture or dislocation can be overwhelming for a child and a family, uh, I tell my families that you can take comfort knowing that the care that you'll receive here at MUSC uh, is pediatric orthopedic specific uh, for your child's needs. For children who have sustained a fracture or dislocation, not only do we have a pediatric emergency room downtown, but we also have three after-hours facilities as well as four pediatric orthopedic clinics all located conveniently throughout the Charleston area.